What is going on everybody? If this is your first time here, my name is Two. And today's project I'm working on Mall Runner as you guys can see. And so um I'm finally dropped some money down and upgraded the uh, suspension on Mall Runner. So before um if you watched my previous videos, um currently I was running uh the Bill Stein 5100s front and rear and they are uh the Old Man Emu Spring with 3 inch lift. So I'm upgrading to the Dobson. I went with the Dobson IMS. Uh, I was debating on the uh, the MRA, but I feel like I don't need the adjustability of the MRA to to justify the price. So that's why I settled with the IMS. And also the IMS is uh, longer travel than the MRA, so that's also a decision why I went with this route. But yeah, so this these are the front shocks. Like I said, these are the. Uh, um, the IMS, these are the extended travel IMS and a coilover, so they're adjustable right here. The springs I went with is um, a two and a half inch lift. This is more closer to like the stock weight. Uh, the reason for that is that with, with the weight I have on this, it will be more like a two inch lift. That's, that's kind of what I wanted to go with was I wanted to drop in my height. Um, the stuff that I do being three inches that is more tippy so yeah decided to drop down so I will lose a little bit of ground clearance but um, I don't think it's gonna be an issue so like I said the front are extended travel coilovers the rear these are the long travel uh, the IMS long travel they are eight inch longer than the standard equipment so these are super long shocks and then these are the variable rate um, springs for the rear. Uh, that's great for. So my plan when we go back to Georgia is that I'm gonna unload all my camping stuff and have them in a trailer. So uh, that's why I'm going with these. If I do load it down, then I have the um, the capacity to carry weight. But when I unload, then I'm still fine. It's not gonna be super stiff. And uh, these are. I think they're a two and a half uh, inch. So we'll see how it goes at the rear. With the way I have on now, the rear is taller than the front because I have front coilover. I can always just adjust it to get my height back. And um, yeah, while I'm at it, I'm doing uh, braided lines. These are extended braided lines uh, from Trail Gear. This is for the front, and then these are for the rear. Uh, the front, I don't need, technically need these, but Mall Runner has 311,000 miles, so they stole the original Moscow's upgrade. But the rear, I do need the rear for the long travel. So, yeah, that's the project today. Um, and I'm also, at the same time, I'm shooting a video on how to clear uh, bigger tires. Um, it'll be somewhere up here, the link. Uh, make sure you guys check that out. You know, I get a lot of people that think, oh, you know, I got three inch lift or four inch lift. Can I fit bigger tires? Things like that. It's not really the case. So watch the video for that. Yeah. So when I order the uh, front Dobson shocks, um, they ran out of the fourth gen and the wait time was like, I think they said like one or two months. So instead of waiting for that, these are for the fifth gen forerunners um if you guys didn't know the difference is the bushing down here um i'm not sure they already swapped it out or not but the fifth gen they're a little bit wider a little bit wider down here so if you use the fifth gen ones you need to spread this piece out on the um motor control arm you spread it out just a little bit and it fits so yeah i'm not sure like i said i'm not sure they replaced the bushing because because they were out of the fourth gen. Either that or the Dobson sells the fourth gen and then for it to fit the fifth gen, they give you spacers for it. I'm not 100%, but I just know that I'm running, according to them, I'm running the fifth gen. All right, so I got it, the shock fully assembled and it's on. As you guys can see, I still, I had, was just a little bit over um, a quarter inch before the shock bottomed out so what I can do and what I'm planning to do in the future is get a little spacer put it on top of the uh, shock um, doing that it will give me more down travel because it and you know, overall it pushes the shock down a little bit 
but uh, you just want to be careful doing that. Uh, that's why you always want to check your bump stop. Um, is that if you use the shock as the bump stop, it'll snap right here. So you guys can, I'll put a picture right here. Where this shaft right here will bend because the shock will bottom out before um, the vehicle hits the bump stop. So that is something you gotta keep in mind, be careful of running the top hat spacers. When I'm off-roading, normally I'm down to 15 PSI. That's kind of my go-to pressure. But for this trip, I uh, decided to try 25 up this obstacle and see how it does. And as you guys can see here, I was struggling for traction. And also, you will notice that the front tires are shaking. That's normal for these. Uh, that's just what happens when the track is working. lean you on that tree. I know. More passenger. Well, unless you're trying to climb this ledge. No, I'm just trying to get out. No problem. Yeah, just messing around and got a little bit too close to this tree. Barely. So decided to winch, winch off this other forerunner. Right up there. Winch off of him so I don't get into this tree. <laughs> it's ice underneath. Oh, you're buried. Yep, so we just got done running the trail and we're back at the trailhead and everybody's about to start airing up. Well, that's it. Thank you guys for watching. See you guys again next time.